bust out a celebratory Domino's pizza because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film hits its 30th anniversary this year. And luckily, now that I'm an adult, I don't have to close my eyes during the scary scenes anymore. Except for that one scene. You know the one I'm talking about. As major fans of Turtle Power, we here at GameSpot have compiled 30 Easter eggs and references from the original film for your viewing pleasure. Cowabunga! One of my personal favorite Easter eggs from the first film is that every body actor who plays a turtle inside the suit actually gets an on-screen cameo. Michelle Insisti, who does the body performance for Michelangelo, also plays the Domino's pizza delivery guy who sticks the pizza box down the sewer grate to Michelangelo. Raphael's body actor, Josh Pius, plays the taxicab passenger who's headed to LaGuardia Airport when Raphael flips over the cab's hood. Donatello's body actor, Leif Tilden, plays the Foot Clan ninja who slaps April across the face in the subway station. And finally, Leonardo's body actor, David Foreman, makes an appearance as a Foot Clan member during Tatsu's standoff against Casey Jones. For the most part, the actors in the bodysuits weren't the same as the voice actors for the various Turtles. Playing Leonardo was Brian Tochi of Revenge of the Nerds fame. Corey Feldman of The Goonies voiced Donatello. Robbie Rist of The Brady Bunch took on Michelangelo, leaving Raphael, who was the only turtle to be voiced by his body actor, Josh Pius. While the Turtles had body actors, Splinter was a puppet controlled and voiced by none other than Kevin Clash, one of Jim Henson's final protégés. He was also the original puppeteer and voiced behind Sesame Street's Elmo. Probably one of the most famous memes from the original TMNT film is this bit here when you can see Leaf Tilden's mouth laughing inside of Donatello's mouth when Raphael wakes up from his coma. I don't think anything in TMNT history has been more disturbing. Never mind! While Toshishiro Obata is intimidating on screen as Tatsu, the Foot Clan's second in command, he may be even more badass in real life. In 1990, he founded the Japanese sword style Shinkendo, which combines multiple Japanese martial arts into one form. As annoying as product placement can be in films, it can also serve as an interesting time capsule. With TMNT, we get to see what's now vintage Burger King packaging from 1990 in one of the film's opening shots. Burger King did a cross-promotion with the film where it sold cassettes of the animated series for $3.49 each. Cool. As much as it pains me to say this being a Diet Cokeaholic, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles instead favored Pepsi products throughout the movie. In the Foot Clan's lair, we see the delinquent kids drinking beer. St. Michael's malt beverage, which just happens to be a type of non-alcoholic beer. They may be delinquents and thieves, but at least they respect drinking age laws. One of the things the turtles are most known for is their love of pizza, so it's only natural there would be product placement for one brand. And this winning brand was none other than Domino's. Hey, this is a 10. The tab's 13. You're two minutes late, dude. Also in the opening sequence, an action figure of Domino's Pizza's old mascot, the Noid, can be found laying in sewer water. Having grown up with the admittedly terrible NES game Yo Noid, I have a weird soft spot in my heart for the strange mascot. In the Foot Clan warehouse of stolen goods, you can see a box of Archie comics off to the side. Archie Comics published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures from 1988 to 1996. Deeper in, in the Foot Clan's lair, you can spot a box of bazooka chewing gum. Similar to Archie Comics, Bazooka actually has a TMNT connection. Bazooka is manufactured by the Topps Company, who also produced TMNT chewing gum and trading cards. In the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons, April O'Neil wears an iconic yellow jumpsuit. However, in the film, this idea was abandoned, and instead April is wearing a yellow raincoat when we first see her leaving the station and getting mugged, referencing the cartoon outfit. When Raphael heads out to get some alone time, the movie he's gone to see is 1986's Critters. Ugh, where did they come up with this stuff? Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Critters was also distributed by New Line Cinema. 
When Casey Jones first meets Raphael, he calls him Bogey, referencing the legendary Hollywood actor Humphrey Bogart, who wore a similar trench coat and hat in the 1942 romantic drama Casablanca. While this reference is right in your face, it may be hard to get the full context of the joke unless you were a baseball fan of the early 90s. When Casey Jones swings a baseball bat at Raphael, Raphael catches it and exclaims, A Jose Canseco bat? Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. Canseco was an outfielder and designated hitter for the Oakland A's. However, in 1989, a year before this film, he missed nearly 100 regular season games that season due to injury and faced multiple legal troubles. In April's apartment, Michelangelo does a few character impressions to make her laugh. The first of these is of Rocky from the film of the same name. Adrian! <laughs> the second is Matt Nolan from Taxi. Mm, you dirty rat! You killed my brother! You dirty rat! Mm. Woo <laughs> In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we can find a young Sam Rockwell playing the head thug in one of his first cinematic roles, offering cigarettes to his fellow teens. He would later go on to get major roles in films such as The Green Mile, Moon, and of course, as Justin Hammer in Iron Man 2. The Foot Clan lair is a giant mishmash of edgy and mature delights for its disaffected kids. This includes skateboarding, gambling, smoking, and of course, arcade games. One such prominent arcade game shown is the arcade game Narc. And I don't blame you if you haven't heard of it, as it's been long forgotten. But at the time, it was criticized for its explicit violence, making it the perfect fit for the Foot Clan lair. As it turns out, Danny is a massive fan of the Sex Pistols. Well, that or Sid Vicious. Every shirt he wears in the movie has a picture of Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious on it. In April's apartment, Donatello and Michelangelo are watching an animated adaptation of the classic tale of the tortoise and the hare. This particular adaptation happens to come from another famous cartoon, The Rocky and Bullwinkle Show. In the thrift shop, Leonardo is looking at the action figure Bingo Beaver, who is a member of the Get Along Gang from the 1980s. While the gang did have their own TV show from 1984 to 1985, they actually started out as a collection of greeting cards. In the original script for the film, Tatsu beats one of the foot ninjas named Shinsho to death. This plot point was altered in post-production, with the movie makers adding breathing sounds and dialogue to show that Shinsho was still alive, probably to maintain that PG rating and keep the film kid-friendly. While the turtles are hiding out at April's family farm, we're treated to a training montage. Among the many scenes that flash by, we see Leonardo fighting his brothers while blindfolded. This scene was fleshed down in the novelization of the movie by B.B. Hiller, with Leonardo trying to teach his brothers to rely on their other senses, not just their eyes. In a joke that'll fly over kids' heads, and probably even most adults, Donatello jokes about some leftover pizza. Question. Uh, yeah? Do you like penicillin on your pizza? No! Penicillin is an antibiotic drug derived from mold. It's a moldy pizza joke. The Sam Rockwell hoodlum tells the police that the Foot Clan hideout is at the East Warehouse on Lairdman Island. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird are the co-creators behind the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you've ever wondered what the Japanese character on the Foot Clan's gear means, wonder no longer. While Shredder refers to it as the Dragon Dochi, the symbol actually means Oni, which translates to demon. While he's hard to spot, Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, actually makes a brief cameo in the film. According to Eastman, this was originally supposed to be an extended supporting role, but unfortunately this was changed to a minor background cameo where he can be spotted pulling up a garbage truck in the background of a turtle fight. Partners in Crime wrote the end credits song to the film Turtle Power. Apparently, they weren't too familiar with the source material and slighted my boy Leonardo. It's Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Donatello. Make up the team with one other fellow, Raphael. He's the leader of the group transformed from the norm by the nuclear goon. Blasphemy. That's blasphemy. All they had to do was listen to the original cartoon song once, and they would have known that Leonardo was the leader of the group. Raphael, on the other hand, cool 
but rude. I think he's actually turning red. Uh, hmm, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Making over $200 million at the box office, TMNT was a smash hit, and at the time, the highest grossing independent film ever made. Now that's radical. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a huge part of my childhood, and I'm sure it was for most of you watching this. Who is your favorite turtle, and what was your favorite turtle product? Mine would have to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game for the NES. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of our other listicles, and I'll see you guys next time. Later guys, peace.